Canada is a land of wealth and prosperity, or at least it used to be. The economic situation under the leadership of Justin Trudeau and his Liberal government is pushing the country into a serious crisis. Today, we'll look at the cause of the money printing scam in Canada and its consequences. Regardless of your politics, a sober look at the monetary policy currently being carried out in Canada can only lead to one conclusion. Canada is being run by fools who are destroying the middle class and sabotaging the nation's wider economic future. At the core of the current monetary crisis in Canada is the Bank of Canada, led by Silver Spoon appointee Tiff McClem. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev has promised to fire McClem if he becomes prime minister, and Polyev says the Bank of Canada has engaged in a money-printing orgy. Our central bank has been printing money to inflate prices. The solution is, of course, to fire the gatekeepers. I've already announced that I will fire the governor of the central bank to get inflation under control. But McClem is far from the only one at fault. Indeed, you can't really blame McClem alone for what's going on, however, as it reaches to a much deeper money printing philosophy held by the Trudeau government and liberal economists. COVID gave Canada's government the perfect excuse to flood the economy with ever cheaper value money, undermining the hard work of Canadians and rewarding fraud and grift. Here's the scary fact about Canada's money supply. It's currently at the highest level since the 1980s per capita, and one in five Canadian dollars in circulation right now didn't exist before 2020. This October, Canada's M2 or broad money supply hit around $4.3 trillion, a rise of about 10% since October of 2022. If you zoom out a bit further to January of 2020, the picture gets even more alarming. Canada's money supply has gone up over 22% since that time. This is more money than all the money that existed in Canada before 1996, printed just over the past three years. That's a huge increase in the amount of currency circulating in Canada's economy. Let's be honest, COVID provided the perfect excuse to flood the monetary supply, with the government spending $240 billion in just the first eight months of the pandemic alone, and the Bank of Canada purchasing $400 billion in bonds with their reserves. While they didn't technically print the money, they did open the floodgates to mass inflation. Trudeau and his his bankers are doing a nasty tango dance and the Canadian consumer and family are paying the price. While liberal economists seem to believe that this will lead to some kind of comeback, the reality on the ground is simple, mass inflation. Canadians are having a hard time putting food on the table, paying for gas and energy bills, and living their daily lives. Tent cities are growing in cities and towns and house prices spiral way beyond what most people can afford. The money printing scam is extremely serious and it's put putting Canada in economic jeopardy and risk of a coming collapse. When you print more money, it leads to inflation. This isn't rocket science, but complaints seem to be falling on deaf ears. Letters from the premiers of British Columbia, Ontario, and Newfoundland sent to the Bank of Canada earlier this year asked McClem not to raise interest rates anymore, but the massive spending being done at the provincial level wasn't mentioned. Federally and provincially, heavy spending that drives up interest rates and inflation are combining with mass introduction of more money in the economy for a disastrous result. When governments increase spending, particularly when financed by debt, they add more money to the economy and help fuel inflation. While the Prime Minister and many Premiers justified their high spending levels during the pandemic as merely temporary, that was clearly a lie. Seven provinces will run budget deficits this year along with the federal government. Ontario is still spending more than it did during the pandemic. Only Alberta and New Brunswick are going to have a budget surplus this year, and most of the country is falling headfirst into this high-spending, money-printing scam. Inflation is expected to keep growing in Canada for at least the next few years if nothing changes, and asset bubbles are also occurring in many key areas of Canada's economy and harming ordinary Canadians. An asset bubble occurs when assets such as housing, stocks, or gold dramatically rise in price over a short period, not caused by the value of the product. Canada is in real trouble, and we need to be honest about it. When the Bank of Canada buys bonds and assets or banks lend money to individuals and companies, the money supply goes up. We're all seeing the result of this flood of money in the drastically rising prices, which reflect a lesser value of our money. This doesn't happen randomly and is the result of a specific economic ideology that's all about big government liberal extremism. There's an easy way to explain this. Imagine there are 
1,000 frozen dinners produced by an economy. The money supply in this economy is $10,000. The average price of the frozen dinner will be $10 each based on demand. If the government puts $5,000 more into the economy and raises the monetary supply to $15,000, but there are still only 1,000 frozen dinners available, then the price of a frozen dinner will go up on an average of $15 each. People have more money to spend, but there's still a limited number of goods available. Demand has increased while supply has remained the same. Prices go up. While people may not care at first since they have more money anyway, the value of the money is down. $15 is now essentially worth $10. As money becomes worth a smaller amount, more of that money is needed on the international market to buy goods from other countries that your own country doesn't produce. This puts your nation into a cycle of dependency and economic weakness as it spins into inflation. Instead of investing or saving money, most Canadians are spending whatever they have to make ends meet, and firms and companies are playing it safe and avoiding taking risks, innovating, or researching. The risks of inflation are no laughing matter. During the period 1971 to 1973, inflation reached levels of 500% per year in Chile. A bit over 10 years later in 1985, the rate of inflation exceeded 11,000% per year in Bolivia. Since 2000, the government of Zimbabwe has printed trillions of Zimbabwe dollars, resulting in rates of inflation hitting 98% per day, the equivalent of over 35,000% per year. This isn't subtle, it's very clear. When central banks buy up massive amounts of government debt, and this leads to flooding the money supply, we eventually get hyperinflation that we usually only see in dictatorships or banana republics. Is this where Canada is headed? A snowy northern socialist sinkhole? Buying federal government bonds paid for by printing money is one tool the bank uses, but it's something that needs to be approached very cautiously. The Bank of Canada is acting irresponsibly, and if they keep going down this road, we are headed for disaster. Even though Canada is obviously nowhere near the crisis experienced historically by Chile or countries like Zimbabwe, we're on our way there if we continue down this road. We already know that printing money by the Bank of Canada buying bonds doesn't make things better. During the 1970s, the Bank of Canada was very dependent on purchasing federal bonds as a way of regulating the money supply. This didn't work well at all. In fact, inflation rates exceeded 10% per year and the government had to put in wage and price controls to stop the economy from collapsing. Oops. So let's get this straight. Inflationary spending and money printing almost crashed Canada before. So now, the Bank of Canada is going to do it all again? How does that logic work exactly? The Bank of Canada is Trudeau's lapdog, allowing massive federal deficits to keep growing and using quantitative easing to dodge its own responsibility for making sound economic decisions. Money is ultimately all about trade on the micro and macro level. All the money in an economy equals all potential unclaimed goods and services that exist in an economy. In other words, it should technically be able to be traded in for some amount of measurable goods and services to have any real-world asset meaning. If a business washes your car and you give them $20, they have the right to use this for some equivalent object or service amounting to $20, rather than trading you directly by having you wash their car too. In other words, they have $20 worth of unclaimed economic buying power as a result of washing your car. When central banks like the Bank of Canada play games with the money and flood the system with currency and buy up government debt out of thin air, they throw a monkey wrench into the economy. Simply put, they overstep their bounds and enable massive government spending, while simultaneously reducing the value of money in people's pockets and diluting it down so that there's much more money than any actual value that exists in an economy. You go to work just as hard as last year, earning slightly more money perhaps, but the cost of living isn't slightly more at all. It's a lot more. A fixed number of goods now costs more and your money is not only worth less, you're spending more of it to get the same product or service. Inflation reduces the purchasing power of your earnings and redistributes buying power from businesses and households to the federal government. Trudeau's government thinks you won't notice that they keep getting bigger and richer while you get smaller and poorer. But Canadians are noticing, and they're getting sick of it. If you like this video and want to learn more about Canada, check out this video here. And if this video brought value to you today, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. Thanks for watching.